Hello and welcome to another engaging edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Theodore Henry, your host for this enlightening journey. As we step into November, we celebrate National Youth Month with the theme, Youth Impact 2024, Innovative Minds, Purposeful Action, Collective Triumphs. It's also Parents Month. In today's show, we will highlight the inspiring triumphs of a young individual living with cerebral palsy, as well as showcase new and effective parenting skills. Stay with us for an enriching experience. Everyone has the right to freedom of expression, even our children. My voice matters. Every child has a right to speak up. It's not like they can stay quiet forever. And um, everything they have to say is important. So that's why I think my voice matters. At school and at home, every child's voice should matter. In this school, nobody is more and nobody is less. My teachers, my parents, um, they, they know who I am because they, they understand me and they know what I understand from what I don't. I will encourage the students to do their best. I will say that even if they do not get something they want, they might get something even better. When emotions are close to the surface and we contemplate on life, we will all remember the phrase, a child shall lead them. My voice matters. Thanks for staying with us. Resilience, devotion, and dedication are just a few words to describe the remarkable journey of a teenage boy living with cerebral palsy. We met him a few years ago as his village shared his inspiring progress in both the classroom and on the track. It's a story that demonstrates that with support and unwavering spirit, significant strides can be made despite the challenges of disability. So why do you love to run? A good game is a good game. At first, I tell her it made me sad. First. First time I usually cry, just looking at him, I usually cry and stuff. And it's a moment where I cry for, I saw my born, you know. So now it's coming like nothing to me, coming like I don't even have a special child. Kirk Wint has been diagnosed with cerebral palsy, which impacted the formation of his lower limbs. Cerebral palsy is caused by damage to the brain, which impacts muscle tone, movement, motor skills, and oftentimes sight, speech, and learning. Kirk, however, has not allowed this condition to define who he is. I'm Kirk's twin. Yes, he is. Girl and boy. So Kirk um, born all four from Kirk earlier. So growing up, there um, I see difficult and stuff. But people always say nothing is wrong with him because his girl and boy say normally slow. But anyway, I go back a Spanish town and I meet the doctor and she say, um, Kirk born breach. I say, what is breach? And she said, born footway. Which I know him born all four of the girl. So from there, you know, those money time and stuff and so but Kirk is very active. Cannot walk, but active and climb every tree. That's him grill, him that. I always stiff and stuff, and him always can learn, him easy remember things. And okay, but I realize him now, what I do all sort of things. I do surgery, I remember when it was so long, but I never get to buy the brace at the time, so it really likes sitting back then. And so. Without the brace, Kirk's condition could not have been rectified, and as such, he was never able to walk on his legs. Still not deterred by this setback, Kirk went on to make a name for himself by representing Jamaica twice at the Special Olympic Games, earning himself a total of three medals. I'm going to license school now, go out there and hear about Special Olympic and they carry him because they come there and interview them and stuff and they see where him can, you know. So I always carry my son and so now I get to go on to the Special Olympic. Fame speciality, you know, he's run for him and a softball show him go, him do. That's a fame sports softball show, so you know, up here, so have everything. Kirk Wink is one of two physically challenged students at the Licensed Center of Excellence. He loves sports, and so he had the opportunity once again to represent Jamaica in the special games. And so he went to Dubai in February 
where he participated in the 50 meter dash. Yes, and he got a silver and he participated in a softball throw where he earned himself a bronze medal. We are proud of all our students and we're even more so proud of Kirkwins. Our motto here is adding value. And so Kirk is treated like a normal child. He gets to participate in any activity he wants to. There are times when he wants to be the gate man and he will be out there opening the gate and he will be a, assisting them, telling them, oh, shuffle, shuffle in the bus, go over there. So Kirk is just normal. He's included, he's involved, and he is good. And why do you love to come to school? To learn, take my education. And what else do you do at school? Play for fun. Kirk is an easy student to teach. He's very attuned to things around him. He's amiable and he fits in very well. There's nothing that he thinks he cannot do. So therefore, his impairment doesn't pose a problem with anything at all. He's just integral in the learning process and that makes it easy to teach him. Normally when he wasn't like this old, because I'm in his 17 now, he would hold on a walk around now, he would rather run around the house. That him can run around the house and reach far. Run outside that for him, but he might have been walker. He might have the power chair and he have been walker, but he's not a walker man, he would rather run for him and he reach quicker. Yeah man, but you know, bathroom, everything, Kirk can do everything for himself, just not him not walking. Everything, be it himself, everything at him that ready to school, everything. But I make him go like the fire side, you know? Kirk help me. Kirk greater my coconut. Anything for greater him that sometimes I say me do it. That's why I'm not like do nothing for you no more. That's what everything. Yeah man. Sweep out in room, spread up in bed at him that. They say it takes a village to raise a child. Kirk's village expands beyond these three wonderful women. And with their help, it is safe to say the best of Kirk is yet to be seen. So what do you want to be when you grow up? Tyler. My wish right now, tell you the truth. I was always hope and pray that one day I would see him walking to me, but I don't know if it's possible, tell you the truth, because he gets older now. So, but I just accept him as it is, and I just hope and pray that things that he need, he really will get it, because he always wants a lot of stuff, and you know, those children, what they need, see him having phone there, you know? Yeah, man, I'm always, I just always want him to be comfortable. Yeah, I always try my best with him. What do you want to tell mommy? I love you much. In an era where effective parenting is more crucial than ever, 
The National Parenting Support Commission is stepping up to provide vital resources and services for families. Let's take a look. Wouldn't it be great if children came into the world so well-adjusted or with manuals, therefore eliminating the need for parental discipline? This is not the case, however. Parents usually apply their methods or they depend on strategies taught throughout generations to guide their children. Eight in ten Jamaican children in the 2 to 14 years age group experience violence as a form of discipline. Coercive parenting involves the physical administration of pain as punishment. It also includes the use of harsh language that has the potential to hurt children's feelings and affect their general self-esteem and development. It also fosters aggression because what you're really teaching children is that when there is an issue, we must resolve the issue through harshness, through aggression, through coarse language. There's a direct correlation between coercive parenting and the aggression that we see actually in society. Damaging disciplinary practices have moved outside of the home and into the national consciousness. Children need guidance, and many wonder if not with the rod, then how? Enter the National Parenting Support Commission, NPSC, an agency of the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information. The ministry established the commission in 2012 to provide parents with the requisite skills and tools to raise children. We work at three tiers. We work at home, school and community. Our first and most important priority, however, is to ensure that we're fostering the homeschool relationship. We must ensure that parents as key stakeholders feel involved in the entire process of educating their children. Now to do this, the Commission assists parents in several ways, including providing psychosocial support, assisting parents with understanding the teaching learning process and conducting parenting education programs. Through our effective parenting courses, we push proactive strategies. In other words, you are going to put structures in place before behaviors that you don't desire actually show. Parents and guardians should consider the child's developmental stage when determining the best method of guidance. A child who is very young we encourage play. The child must be playing and even the teaching learning processes must include play because this is how they develop their imagination, their creative skills. This is how they also learn to resolve issues and to problem solve. Young children, especially infants, are at the stage where they don't know right from wrong and they can be impulsive. They may touch items that are valuable or dangerous Usually, it is best to remove the child or the object from such a situation. We don't believe you're to spank any at all because uh, that's a part of coercive parenting and we don't believe that coercive parenting works. So what we encourage you to do though is to be firm and to be consistent. So if it means you have to say, do this instead or do not go there a million times, then that's what you have to be prepared to do. The teenage years can challenge both children and parents. With the physical and chemical changes happening in the body, teens may act out as they may be unsure of their place in the world. This can be a very difficult time to navigate. So we ask that you start relaxing some of the very stringent rules and you also have conversations and you compromise. And to address challenges, caregivers can remove privileges. If the child becomes stubborn, has a fixed mindset, if you will, that this is what he or she is going to continue to do, then you might need professional help. You might need to call the commission or you might need to call a social worker or a guidance counselor to help. Being a proactive parent means setting clear boundaries letting children know what is acceptable behaviors and why rules are in place. And don't forget to model behaviors you want young ones to display. There may not be a one-size-fits-all for raising children. By assessing the right information and using effective parenting techniques, 
we can nurture adults willing to play their part in making Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. To tap into information from the National Parenting Support Commission, call 876-967-7977 or visit their offices at 37 Arnold Road, Kingston 6. Next, another inspiring story. Breast cancer survivor Sandra Samuels shares her courageous journey from diagnosis to recovery. She discusses the vital role positivity played in helping her navigate the most challenging moments. And it was shocking for me because, I mean, no one in my family had breast cancer. Sandra Samuels, a resilient breast cancer survivor diagnosed in 1999, reflects on the shocking revelation of her illness in a family devoid of such a history. Her story underscores the unexpected nature of her diagnosis and the importance of awareness. As Sandra recounts her experience, she details the unsettling journey from discovering a lump to undergoing medical evaluations, emphasizing the critical moment that led to her diagnosis of stage 2 breast cancer. Mine was a stage 2. I had spread to my underarm, so that is why I had to do radiotherapy at the time. I had taken out a lump nine years prior, and so I always checked my breasts from time to time. But this evening in particular, I was just watching TV, you know, rubbing my chest. It was a kind of comfort thing that I do when I'm lying down. And I found a hump in my chest wall. The, the lump I had taken out nine years prior was benign. It was not cancerous. And so, you know, I wasn't really worried. So I called, when I called my doctor and he says, okay, come in, he ordered a mammogram. My mammogram came back negative. And the reason why my mammogram came back negative was because my lump was in my chest wall in the 12 o'clock position, totally out of the screening of the mammogram of the breast, which is the fatty part of the breast. It was very frightening. I'm an only child for my mom. And so just the pressure of even telling my mom that I was diagnosed with, the, with this disease was really very challenging. She, was in, she went into denial at first. And then, you know, we kind of balled together. And my, I have an amazing village. And so I called my friends and family and we all had a good ball. And then we, we just stepped into, you know, survival mode. I had to do a partial radical mastectomy by in two weeks' time. And after the two weeks, I had my mastectomy and of the left breast. And then I did four treatments of chemotherapy. And then I did 16 treatments of radiotherapy. Everybody went into knowledge mode. They researched all that they could have um, to, you know, to be more 
awfully as to what breast cancer really is and what I was facing. And they were just there for me. They followed me to treatment. Everybody took turns. And it was just an amazing, amazing time. I'm a businesswoman, I'm an entrepreneur. And my customers were also very supportive. I deal with men for a living and they made me feel special. They made me still feel pretty, which is very important because, you know, with breast cancer, your image is hit. Your image, your sexuality, you know, you, it takes a hit. So I am the, I am the ultimate um, positive individual. So I didn't go into I'm gonna die mode. That never ever came up. I am very spiritual. And so once I got the diagnosis, of course, after I finished balling, I said to myself, or I said to God, I had a conversation with God and I said, okay, this is breast cancer, so what will you have me do with it? And as clear as day, it came to me that I needed to make this known to the general public the Jamaican public about breast cancer. So I immediately, uh, once treatment was finished, I went public, uh, hit everybody who was be willing to listen, because as I said, I knew nothing about it. So my mission was to make everyone know about breast cancer, and in particular, early detection of breast cancer, because I was told categorically that that was the key to survival. When somebody who has been through the fire and been there, done that, surviving 10, 12, 15 years, in my case, 25 years, somehow you receive the information differently. It makes you feel confident that you can do it too because you're looking at people who can, who did, who, who have already done so and is living their life normally. And so now we have a run called the Pink Run. Every last Sunday in October every year. And we raise funds for women because what we found whilst doing our um, counseling is that what they really needed was financial assistance as well. Because financial assistance, it, it's pointless to be telling somebody that it'll be okay and they don't have the first dollar. Sandra Samuels' journey through breast cancer has transformed her into a passionate advocate for awareness and early detection. Through her remarkable strength, she has committed herself to educating others about the disease, inspiring countless individuals to recognize the vital importance of support and proactive health measures. Her story is a powerful testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the impact of community in overcoming adversity. The Jamaica Customs Agency recently hosted an insightful panel discussion on the theme, Ethical Leadership, the Impact on Cross-Border Trade, Supply Chain, and Trade Facilitation. Here are the highlights. Welcome to the Jamaica Customs Agency Anti-Corruption Panel Discussion and Luncheon 2024. Corruption is an insidious plague that has a wide range of corrosive effects on society. It undermines democracy and the rule of law, leads to violations of human rights, distorts markets, erodes the quality of life, and allows organized crime, terrorism, and other threats to human security to flourish. Anybody who looks at and says, okay, there is an opportunity for me to cut the corners and do this, I can make a short term. That's, that is not going to be highly successful and sustainable for the long term. And that's a difference. That's what we need to, as a society, we need to speak more about building that knowledge, that, that awareness for the need for us to think more long term in everything that we do. The environment, sustainability, businesses, relationships, the home, the values, etc. The first day that you slip, 
the first day that you do something that you're not supposed to do at the behest of someone who is corrupt, they have you for life, right? You're never going to get from under their thumb that that is it for you. So make the right decision every single day. The money is not worth it. The house is not worth it. If you keep pushing, it will, tr it will come. And it may not come to the extent that you might dream of, but you don't want to be under somebody's thumb for the rest of your life. It is not just um, the support indirectly and directly that corruption gives to organized crime, to um, the environment that, that we operate in in Jamaica that we all complain about. So I think it's stepping back as leaders and recognizing the impact of maybe these small things or the things that we don't, we take for granted, but the impact they have on the greater, the culture of how we operate in Jamaica. The Jamaica Customs Agency is serious about preventing and combating corruption through the implementation of practical solutions. For customs, the value system is capped, and for other entities, they have their value system. And once we are always not thinking about ourselves, but thinking about the society, the community, customer. Integrity is a crucial part of our operations at customs and is also one of our core values. The agency has strategically sought to institutionalize how we operate through the establishment of the Internal Affairs Division and further builds out on this division with the introduction of an anti-corruption and integrity section. Every time the public, our stakeholders, our clients, interface with us, they encounter ethical behavior and it forces them to comply in order to achieve their objectives. Um, and this is in addition to all the other points raised, but it's very important for us to maintain what we're doing and to build upon what we're doing and to ensure that it's not just ethical leadership in a silo, but the aim of ethical leadership is to establish and to develop an ethical organization. As leaders within an organizational context, as leaders within society, whether we want to admit that people look to us for inspiration, guidance, and, and obviously, for, for example, that uh, we have to set the tone and we have to do things in a, in a consistent and, a, and an appropriate way um, within the context of, of um, the, 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 the approved norms, legislation, policy regulation at whatever level. What we have to do is lead by example and lead from the front and actually live it. Live an ethical life within your business life and in your personal life and those are the things that are going to permeate throughout your organization. It gives me great pleasure to inform you of one of our key achievements that demonstrates our, com our commitment to our core values and the delivery of quality service. Team Customs, of course you know that. That is, in 2023, the Jamaica Customs Agency received ISO 9001-2015 Certification in Quality Management System. As we conclude today's edition of Jamaica Magazine, we hope you found these features informative and engaging. Stay connected with JIS through our website at jis.gov.jm and on social media. On behalf of the production team, I'm Theodore Henry. Have a great weekend. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.